Welcome to the Tiger's Den. This is the voice of Cheryl, and I am Toothless Tiger. I come to you under the Fair Use Act. I'm going to read from an article that was written by Mark Wingfield from Faith Freedom 2020. The article was written June 19, 2020. And Mark made a statement. But on Sunday, I had a subscriber to ask me, what was my take on Juneteenth? And the only thing I could say about Juneteenth was that was when we were told in Texas that we were free two years after the freedom came. Also recall growing up that we celebrated Juneteenth by eating watermelon, barbecue, and red soda pop. But the main two staples were red soda, and we call it soda water, and watermelons, red meat or yellow. So I'm going to go ahead with the article. Juneteenth should remind us of all the things we don't know. The still unanswered question is why it took two and a half years for news of Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation to make it to Texas. Why did enslaved people in Texas continue living in bondage when by law they were free? Good question. There is a bound about the lag from the official proclamation on January 1st, 1863 to the declaration of this news in Texas on June 19th, 1865. By some accounts, a messenger on his way to Texas with the news was murdered. By other accounts, the good news of freedom was deliberately withheld by slaveholders who didn't want to acknowledge it. Still, Others surmise that federal troops delayed in order for the slave owners to get through one more cotton harvest, a 19th century version of preserving the economy at all costs. Another part of the story is that Lincoln proclaimed freedom for slaves before the war was won. And even determining when the war officially ended is impossible to say. Some argue that the war continues to this day. I would agree. Whatever the reason for the delay, thousands of enslaved humans in Texas didn't get the news that slavery had been abolished in the Confederate States. The story wasn't told. But why is a middle-aged white guy like me writing about this historical travesty on this very Juneteenth? the anniversary of that day in 1865 when Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger landed at Galveston with news of emancipation. I'm writing because it turns out that there's a lot of news I have failed to learn too. Last year while watching the hit HBO series Watchmen, I learned about the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921. This historical event plays a pivotal role in setting up the TV series. As I watched the show, I remember thinking, this sure looks like something that really happened. I wonder where and when it was. A simple internet search taught me that this indeed was a real event that had happened less than 90 miles from where I was born and within a hundred miles of where I studied Oklahoma history in junior high and high school. And yet I never had heard the story of what one historian called the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. Through 11 years of public school education and two years of college education in Oklahoma, 
I never heard the story of how up to 300 black citizens were murdered by white supremacists and 35 square blocks of the wealthiest black community in the United States was reduced to rubble. How could I not have been taught about this? Also, just last year, I learned about the Katz drugstore sit-in in the end that took place in Oklahoma City in the summer of 1958. The year that I was born, by the way. This nonviolent protest of segregation set off a sit-in movement that lasted for years. Even though I lived maybe 15 miles from the location of this sit-in, I might as well have lived halfway around the world. Another part of local history we were not taught. The lack of education is easier to understand if you realize that the small town school district I attended through fourth grade still practiced segregation based on which side of the train tracks you lived. And the school districts where I attended fifth through 11th grade was in such a lily white suburb that I honestly did not know a single black person, not one. It is no wonder then that we white Americans assume things are better for our black and brown neighbors than they really are. Few of us know the full story, the real story. We have some facts to throw around, but we don't have knowledge. Sometimes we lack knowledge because we think ignorance is bliss. It is easier not to know sometimes we lack, it's easier not to know. Sometimes we lack knowledge because we prefer to believe a lie. And sometimes we lack knowledge because no one has told us the full story. The more we learn about someone else's story, the more understanding we gain about their perspectives. The more we learn about someone else's story, the more compassion we feel toward them. The more we learn about someone else's story, the more we realize we must change. This year, Juneteenth must not be a black holiday. If we are to find a way forward in our country, if we are to be authentic followers of Jesus, we must find the humility to admit that we don't know nearly as much as we think we do. This year, Juneteenth must become a day for all of us to earnestly fill in the gaps of the stories we have not been taught. To fail to do so will leave us all in bondage. I thought that was a pretty good article because it goes to show you a lot of times we in our Asiatic communities, we truly believe that people are taught more than we're taught and they know more than they know. There are biases in the homes and you do have parents teaching their children um, to treat us differently, but truth is seldom told. It's very hard to find truth tellers. And when you do, oftentimes you'll find them alone because no one really wants to be around someone who tells the truth. For some reason, we have the mentality that lie to me, tell me anything, please just don't tell me the truth. So I thought this was a very interesting article. And as I stated on Sunday on the couch with Toothless Tiger, I will take up the subject of Juneteenth and I'll have more history to back it up. What I do know, though, is that in 1861, this was when Congress adjourned Sina Dia, meaning end of day, the government was overthrown. It was called a coup d'etat. And we haven't had a legitimate du jour government since that day. Of course, no one will tell us that. And that's why I have problems when I see people uh, talk about us as a people and how they love us and how they want us all to come together. But yet they don't tell us the truth of who we are and our history. 
makes it very hard for me since I've been on my journey and started learning how things are done and why they are done, the way they're done. Makes it very hard for me to hee hee and ha ha and just tell the normal story. I put this information out hopefully so that people will listen or read or learn or research and come to the same conclusion and then find the remedy for their families and start teaching their young, our babies, our future. Perhaps you've gotten this far in the video. I don't know. I hope you did. If you have, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed. My channel will continue to give you what I have to give, and that is me and my authentic self. And I will give you the knowledge that I've acquired through research. I don't have all the answers. I don't know all the answers, but I will give you what I have and I'll tell you where I found it and send you on your way if you want to research and find it out. Again, a lot of people don't want the truth. So I have to be in a place where I'm very comfortable where I am. And I'm grateful today that I am very comfortable in who I am. I want us to come together as a people, not just as Asiatic Americans, but that's where my focus lie. And I would be lying if I said anything other than that. But we have to understand that everybody that was on this continent and not in this country, this is a continent, are all organic to the land. We're all indigenous people. And they have labeled us as Negro, Black, colored, African-Americans, Indians, Hispanics, Latin, Latino, Puerto Ricans, and Islanders. We're all the same people. I can't explain to you the metamorphosis that took place, like, you know, when the different textures of the hair has changed and the colors of the skin, because we as Asiatic women can produce all people because all life comes from us. I want us to get back to the matriarchal system so that we can look inside of ourselves and become the greater self that we are. It's very hard to get people who've been taught their whole life one way to even open their minds to want to see something another way. But that is my mission in life and my purpose. And so I will do it until I transition. So please join me on the journey. And if you don't want to stay on the journey, just put the word in someone else's ear that you love. Perhaps they'll pick up the mantle. It's just like the written word. For those who have ears, let them hear. For those who have eyes, let them see. Everyone won't hear and see this message. And everyone won't resonate with this message. But there are some of us that feel that we are different. And we want to know more. We've done everything that we know to do that is right, that we were taught as we were growing up. But as individual adults, full life breathing, organic to the land, human beings, we decided that we needed to know more. I am grateful that I am one of those people. I thank you for coming into the tiger's den with me. I truly appreciate it. Let me share with you just how much. I love it. Thank you, Gotti. If any of you that watch me and you have a channel, would you please give me your information in the comments? I sometimes try to look for people, but I can't find them by their name or the name that I see in the chats. So I would like to support anyone that supports me. So please, if you have a channel and if I'm not subscribed to your channel, would you please leave your information in the comments and I'll be more than happy to support you because I am grateful that you support me. On that note, 
I'm leaving the Tigers again. We'll take this information up on Sunday. Goodbye. This video was made for education and entertainment purposes only. There's no malice or ill intent from the content creator. So please like, share, and subscribe, and have a great evening. Good night.